y'all what's up what's going on welcome back to my channel so for today's look we are doing a tutorial on this simple easy look for Thanksgiving alter it how you want of course this doesn't have to be just for Thanksgiving this could be your everyday this could be your nighttime this could be whatever you want but for me this is just my preference I could see me totally doing this for Thanksgiving so let's go ahead and get into the look all right guys, I'm gonna make this as easy and simple as possible. I know that when I am, you know, doing family functions, like you don't wanna be too, too beat, but you know, you wanna have a little something, something going on. So that is what we're going to do here. If you need to prime your face, please do so. I'm using the Becca Ever Matte. Um, I said it in a video earlier on in my Sephora recommendations. I don't use primer in the summertime because I feel like it doesn't do anything. But when it gets cooler, I don't really use a ton of mattifying foundations, so I use a mattifying primer. Skin's all primed. If I need something super, super quick and easy, I don't really put on foundation. What I do is I put concealer in the center of my face and then I'll do some like bronzing contouring. So that is what we're going to do. Use whatever products you guys want to use. You do not have to use what I'm using. So I'm using the Kat Von D Lock It Cream Concealer. A good alternative for this one is the um, Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. That's a really good concealer as well. It's very similar to this one and as far as like how they perform and the coverage. And I always put the most in the center of my face because that is where I want most of the coverage. So I took a damp beauty blender and we're gonna blend everything out. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, where are you guys going? Do you travel? Do you stay home? Um, Thanksgiving, I know for me, hasn't really quite been the same since my grandpa passed away three years ago. So what we did last year was my mom, she doesn't live in Charlotte, she lives in Goldsboro, North Carolina. That's where I grew up at. It's over by Raleigh. So she came last year and she met Marillo's family for the first time. So she cooked her food and then we just took that over to Marillo's parents. Um, Marillo's parents, you know, they're not American, they're Brazilian. So I think it's ironic that we celebrate Thanksgiving with <laughs> them but it's all well and good so you know they don't do like traditional like southern American food so we have like a good mix of everything so my mom comes and she does like you know her turkey her ham her collard greens the macaroni and cheese you know the cliche you know the typical southern foods and then his parents you know they'll make their food so it's like a really really good mix up so my mom is coming again for Thanksgiving by the time this video goes up this is going up on Tuesday so she'll be here tomorrow which will be Wednesday so she'll be here and she's gonna cook us a lot of good food she's gonna make us sweet potato pie it'll be awesome I'm gonna do a video with my mom I'm gonna do her makeup she's gonna be my next model so my mom's my hardest client cuz she can't sit still to save her life she's very hyper unlike me I feel like I'm a pretty like you know mellow even tempered person my mom's very hyper so yeah all right, next up, we are going to be doing bronzing, contouring, snatching, dimension, whatever you wanna call it. And this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Stick in Earth. This is a foundation. I don't really care for it all over my face, but this particular shade, just for adding dimension to the face, yes. Yes and yes. I like to do this technique, especially like if I need to travel and I'm trying to pack light, I will just bring like a concealer in this because by the end of it, it will look like I have on like the full works, like the foundation, the contouring, it'll look like I have all that on, but I really don't. So that's like my little cheat, my little cheat. And then, <laughs> this five head and all I did was flip over my beauty blender I'm just using the big side the butt side some people like to call it and I'm just blending it out I do like the cream I guess contouring the best just simply because it looks the most natural I know it's intimidating for a lot of people but it it does look the best. I feel like if you can get a stick, that helps so much. All right, all right, all right. Next up, we gotta set everything using the Sasha Buttercup powder. This is my favorite 
to use and I'm just going to take my sponge here and I'm not baking I'm just going to press this into Ooh, I got too much ay 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 and I'm just going to press this into my skin and I do take this right on over that contour that we laid down because it's just going to help set it in place. I feel like sometimes when I go, if I don't put any translucent powder over my contour, my cream contour, when I put my powder contour over it just to intensify it a little bit more, I feel like it kind of gets stuck and it's harder to blend because you know it's it's a cream and so the first place that you lay your brush down that's where you're going to get the most pigment so I found that this helps me to blend it out a little bit better and set my brows cuz the brows just get oily and I do if I bake anywhere I'll typically do it like down the center of my nose and maybe right on the outside of my nose and that is just going to give more highlight it's just going to make it look a little bit more highlighted add some more dimension you know what I mean face is set S-E-T-U-H, set. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and da, 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 put some bronzer on. Um, so I repurchased my CoverGirl Queen Ebony bronzer because, you know, that's my jam. And I put it on me the other day and I guess because my, you know, my summertime tan is officially gone, that thing was so red on me. So I'm just gonna keep using my Sasha, not Sasha, what is this? Shea Moisture bronzer. My only issue with this is I can't find it anywhere and I'm, I'm hitting the pan, so. I'm gonna put on a little bit of blush. I've been using the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish and Sun Power. This is another one if you're afraid of blush this is just gonna give you that flush of color. And when you put it, you have to build this up if you want to show. So you don't ever have to worry about putting too much on with this one. That is, if you're my skin tone or deeper. If you're lighter, obviously it's probably gonna show up more, but if you got melanin like me or deeper, you good. And I have found a little blush trick too, using a small blush blush brush using a small brush this is the brush that I used to use and I like it because it's tapered however I find that using a little brush for your blush is going to help you not put so much on your face and make it like pay out because if you bring your blush in too far down it'll make your face drag it'll make your face droop or if you have a smaller face and you're using a larger blush brush it's gonna take over your face and you'll look like a cur like a clown and we're not trying to look foolish and I snatched so this is it for me my face is good let's move on to the eyeballs all right so this is the eye look it's like this kind of mauve-y honestly I didn't know what I was gonna do I just started messing around and this is what I came up with and I'm digging it so let me prime my eye oh yeah I apologize so for my Huda Beauty <laughs> the eye demo like a good portion of it y'all were looking at my eight head and you know ain't, like ain't nobody trying to look at that so my bad y'all I literally didn't notice it until I was editing and I was like mm, well you live and you learn the palette we're using today is the Morphe 3502 it's bomb. I like it a lot. So go ahead, grab your brushes. The first brush I'm going in with, you guys always know my my main brushes, MAC 224, MAC 217, MAC 247. That's all I need to pull off a look. The first shade we're going to go into is called Risky, and this is with the 224 brush. And we're just going in the crease, look straight ahead, leave your eye open so that way you can see exactly where your shadow is going and what it will look like once your eye, I mean, so that way you'll know what it looks like because I think a lot of people get in the habit of doing all their eye work with their eye closed. Well, you know, some sometimes, well, you know, duh, obviously for certain things you have to close your eye, but especially when you're working in your crease transition color, make sure you're leaving your eye open because you don't walk around with your eyes closed you know what I mean this is going to this look is going to be like super super easy 
because I like giving you guys things that are actually obtainable. You know what I mean? <laughs> I see so many cool looks, but I'm kind of like, your subscribers must be like all MUAs because some things just aren't easy. And it took me a minute to realize that. I think I realized that through my clients, like I can do things and somebody that's new to makeup or doesn't have a lot of time might not be able to do it. So it's not obtainable to them. So, you know, gotta be realistic. All right, and then the next, we're going to take 217 with the shade Chestnut. This, these mattes in this palette are like out of this world. They are so like, mm, it's like, it is creamy. I hate using the terms buttery and creamy, but these mattes are, are legit that. I don't have an autofocus, so I'm not one of those that can like move around and the camera's gonna catch it, so I gotta make sure. This is going on the outside and then we're just gonna go ahead and start putting that in the lower crease here and if it gets on the lid all good and sometimes with the outer corner I just like to kind of press it in there because you know obviously when you start doing the swirling motion you will lose some of that pigment so that way to make sure that I'm getting the intensity that I want I'm kind of just packing it on in there and then whatever's left, we're just gonna blend that baby right on up. And roll a thumb, like I always say, just follow the natural shape of your eye. Once you start going on trying to create different shapes and things, sometimes it can get a little tricky. You can never go wrong with following the natural shape of your eye. Okay, next up we're gonna go in with a shade polish. I thought this was gonna be a little bit more mauve but it wasn't, but it was okay because this shade actually popped off way better than I was expecting. And I'm just gonna take a flat brush and mm, look at it, so pretty. And my brush is dry, you guys know I never wet my brushes. Like I said, I don't have a legit reason, I just never do. <laughs> All right, and then with the 224 and just a little bit of the chestnut. Now wiping off my 224, I need to go buy another one. And I'm just swirling here. Now the brow bone, I'm using the shade Universal, which I think is a pretty good name for it. And we're just gonna go right up in here. I try to pack most of the color like right where the arch is, you know what I mean? And that is it for the eyeshadow. Next up, I'm going to use some liner. This is NYX Wonder Pencil in light. In the waterline, I like this because like, it's, I'm not trying to be super, super glam, you know? I want my eyes to look nice and bright. This is also a good technique for anyone that has like a smaller set eye. If you have small eyes, lining your eye with the white or beige pencil is gonna make your eyes look instantly bigger. If you are someone that has a bigger eye, bigger shape eyeball, you might not want to do this. And then we're just going to take a flat brush, going in with chestnut, and we're gonna rim right underneath and kind of connecting on the outside here. Then we're going to take a little bit of that polished and it's just gonna go pull that down. Not doing a super bright inner tear duct today. I didn't feel like it. All right, so the last step is just gonna be I'm gonna put just a basic line on my lash line, mascara, skipping out on lashes. I'm not a lash girl. I don't know if you guys have realized that. Like if I'm going out, I'll pop on a lash or if I feel like an eye look really requires it, I'll put on false lashes. However, it's not something I definitely don't wear false lashes on an everyday basis. But if you're someone and you love the look of false lashes, put them on, girl. All right, I have no idea what I'm doing for lips. I thought this was gonna be a little bit more of a cooler tone mauve situation and I was going to use MAC Whirl. However, it's not. We're gonna go with the Sephora collection. Much better. Now for some, this might be too dark for you. It might be 
too much so you can never go wrong with the nude I just I prefer brown tone lipsticks and this is just a Sephora collection lip cream and pretty Auburn all right so this is going to complete the look just nice soft finish I didn't throw on any highlighter just simply because I'm not a highlighter junkie of course alter it to your needs do what you want it is your face I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving and I will see you in my next video bye